Well, I, I have to say that uh, over the years listening to your messages that I've been lucky enough or fortunate enough to be able to listen to that you sent to me from time to time, literally have changed the way I feel. It's changed the way I think in a lot of cases, mostly the way I feel. And, and that gets me to what I'd really like to start talking about as soon as we can. And that is learning to feel and, and how important that internal tool that we have within us is to human beings, especially living in the present day for us human beings to make it through to the next day is to um, have hope and to feel like we have hope, to feel that we have um, potential future opportunities where we can have joy, experience joy in our lives again, because it's been very few moments in the last six months um, that, I, I don't know, maybe five to six months, it seems like it's a year, uh, that we can actually have a relaxing, joyful moment when things aren't being talked about around us or we're not feeling the energy of what's happening around us with um, in events. Let's just say events, because that's kind of what I, I noticed. The key words that, that a lot of people are using are, are used to program the person that they're talking to ahead of time mm -hmm. um, about the subject matter that we're going to discuss. And so mm -hmm. in, in that, trying to enter into a new way of us learning to communicate with each other, take out the energized words and use words that are not, not generic, but are pinpointed to and accurate to the feelings that we're having. Because a lot of times we're talking, I find myself talking and other people who come to talk with me, uh, not talking about our feelings, but talking about events that are happening around us that are causing us to feel sadness or to feel anger or to feel fear probably is the biggest we're having a reaction right yeah mm -hmm. exactly mm -hmm. and so that is one of the things i really want to ask you about today is with all that is happening um it seems as though it's happening in our in our world at least if we believe everything that we watch on a news program and accept it as potentially true, um, it's difficult to maintain a sense of balance. Really, in my opinion, it's difficult for us to maintain a sense of balance in our lives so that we can walk on the planet and go to our um, group meetings or family meetings and, and show up and be real instead of being, an, it's being a reactionary being instead of a loving, gentle, um, intelligent being. I don't know. That's, that's what I've been thinking about. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so what's the question? How do we help one another get back into feeling and get away from uh, experiencing energy that's coming from others yeah. or media in the form of fear, in the form of problems, in the form of events that are uh, difficult to deal with. We have to be present and neutral and balanced in order to receive uh, data on these higher frequency levels. And we're all designed to do this. Um, and it's, it's what I have been, uh, you know, mentoring people with uh, in groups before the pandemic arrived. Um, but just uh, now in the, you know, basically one-on-one -on -one ways so that we can really dive into um, these moments uh, when to, to know when we're not in the present and we're not feeling. So... When we become reactionary to these, um, you know, to the, the words, as you were pointing out, the language that someone's using, um, if someone is regurgitating something they heard on the news, 
doesn't matter what news station, um, if you've aligned with a certain ideology and you've picked your camp at this point, um, you're pretty much programmed to the level that you're going to react. You're going to dismiss anything and everything that's coming from the other side. There are uh, very, very um, dark, manipulative forces that um, are playing, and I've said this on the blog, and I think it's come through the messages, that are playing both sides. This is very deliberate. Um, so that, uh, because they know that you, if you, if one has emotional blocks, if you're not actually feeling, um, you're, you're going to, the trauma that you carry, the debris that is unconscious within our bodies and our emotional being, um, can be specifically targeted to, to get you reactionary, angry, um, hateful, um, violent, all of these things can be easily, easily triggered in us if we're, if it's unconscious stuff. So <clears throat> when we're played back and forth in this way, um, if we haven't done our emotional work, um, we're, we're going to, let's say, play into the hands of those who um, actually laugh at how easy this is. Um, to control and to manipulate. <clears throat> so the reason why we need to be conscious of what we feel um, and to do the work, to do the conscious work around um, uh, our emotions is because once that is um, um, transmuted, uh, you are more clear and you can start to feel the data that comes through these higher frequency um, levels. Now, why can I hear it and feel it and, and someone like you can hear it and feel it? Um, because I've been <laughs> essentially trained my whole life through these ET experiences and you know, constantly having to die and be reborn again to face my fears, face my fears rise above it then you know worldview is smashed and okay then who am i you have to keep asking yourself who am i you know what am i what do i love what why am i here right so each time that that gets wrecked which it's gonna get wrecked for a lot of people um uh if it hasn't already for you if your ha lives haven't you know the way just with the pandemic, you know, our lives are, are not the same and never will be. Everything that we experience is, a, you know, a potential uh, avenue and to be more present and to be more conscious and aware uh, so that we're not just glued to the, the darkness, which attracts other darkness, so that when we can bring more light into our being, um, we can be of great service um, in this arena. And that's why there are a lot of people here who are, who have been very confused about why they, they've had the kinds of unusual lives they've had, where they've had to essentially have these strange experiences or maybe just, you know, terrible accident or a terrible illness where you're constantly challenged to keep showing up and keep living and keep, you know, what, what is at the core, you know, like it forces you inside so that you can have this conversation with yourself. And I always say with a capital S this inner wisdom, this inner, this core identity is what informs us. And this is what all the messages have been about, is get, here's how you can prepare for this coming time with your consciousness so that you can be more available. 
and that you can know what to do when you need to do it. And with little to no interference from your own wounding and trauma and, you know, that causes anger, rage, defensiveness. Um, if you have, if, if these things erupt within us, the thing to do is to go, oh, wait, gosh, I'm triggered. Why? Why am I being triggered? Because this, this um, greater optimal state of consciousness to be able to know what you need to know when you need to know it um, <clears throat> does not get triggered. You know, you might feel discomfort. Um, you might feel a little anxiety. It's not, it's not to say that you're just like walking around all, you know, I am a pure and open being. It, it isn't like that at all. It's very moment by moment of consciousness. What am I feeling? Why am I reacting? Take it inward rather than sending out the anger and the rage and the defensiveness and the fighting and all of this. This is, this is the wrong direction to go, period. If that's what you're engaged in, then that world that you're engaging with and that darkness has a plan for your consciousness because you're not using it. You're not valuing it enough to own it and to be it, right? So you were going to say something. Oh, you just stimulated uh, something that just happened within, within my mind Recently, I was watching some pro program about the problem with uh, racism in the United States. And I saw a sign that said white only or white only. And it reminded me of my childhood living here in Southern Colorado, where there was a sign that said dogs and Mexicans not allowed. And I remember asking my grandfather, because we were going to go into this store. Um, we couldn't sit at the uh, food counter uh, because it said dogs and Mexicans not allowed. And I remembered that. So it came up in, in this last month uh, often in my mind. Why is it that those signs, white only still, why does that still have an effect every time I see one? And it brings up an old anger, childhood anger actually that wondering why others could sit and have a, a Sunday, a chocolate Sunday sitting at the uh, food counter or a sandwich and we couldn't. And we always used to say, my mom and dad would always say, well, tell people that you're Spanish, you know, you're not Mexican, you're Spanish. But the truth is, is that um, we were all Mexican at one time in the Southern Colorado area because Mex it was Mexico. And then it was given or sold to some for almost nothing, I think, to the United States government. But that, that's an example of a trauma, a traumatic event that happened in my childhood that still has a recurring physical effect on me every time I see those signs. I actually get angry that why is it I'm not as good as they are? Or why is it the black people don't be, aren't considered as good as the whites. And I, I never have been able to figure any of that out. And it's, so it's still these tapes that keep um, playing in my head. So as you said earlier about how important it is to clear out all of the trauma so that one can not go that to that same spot and then have that take up all your energy, but to clear out the trauma so that you can feel what you're really feeling mm -hmm. and to know what you're feeling. And you've often said that in your messages and in your blogs to know what you're feeling so you can feel what you know mm -hmm. and vice versa so that you can know what you feel. Mm -hmm. And, and they, they go hand in hand, but it, it is easier said than done yeah. when we're, um, we see things that immediately take us back to our childhood or back to a, 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 whatever age I was, teenager, when it was the same thing happening to me in high school and, and so forth. Just this feeling of worthlessness that was projected out onto mm -hmm. the Chicano kids or the Hispano now people call us Hispanic. There's a lot of things they call us Latinx, whatever. Human beings that had a little bit different color skin or had a last name that was different than, than others. So all of that stuff has to be cleared out before one can 
be in a real honest uh, being in the present moment, honestly being in the present moment so that our minds aren't thinking about all that other stuff. Uh, and that's uh, where I feel we have to be right now. More than yes. Anything. I would just, um, you know, if I could um, alter a little bit what you just said, the way I would say it is um, we don't, it, it isn't that we have to clear it all out before, you know, it isn't like some goal oriented thing. All that's required in any given moment is to bring consciousness to it. So you notice, oh, that, ping in in your solar plexus when you see that sign Ugh. okay you know and if you're if you're driving or if you're in a space where you can start to dialogue to you know, this is what this is what this non-human intelligence taught me this was the practice um, that you start to dialogue uh, i'm noticing that i just had a feeling of pain and disgust and you know and just try to to articulate it the best you can and have it match your voice so that your body and your voice sync and it's like yeah yeah that's it yeah disgust yeah that mm -hmm, i'm getting a yes on this that's what this feeling is or um anger oh this makes me so angry and then so you feel it and you're not you're just being present with it. And then you can say, I want to understand this. I really want to know what this is and why it affects me to this degree. And so you're zeroing in with your amazing, um, you know, um, intellect. And even I've even referred to this as, as the ego, allowing the ego to step into its new position of director it's like whoa you know bring the ego in and it's like whoa i get to i get to participate in recreating how we do things here you know mm -hmm. so it's it's the ego's on board and you're like yeah you know what we got to be an investigator now because uh this is blocking us it's uh, we're not getting anywhere i'm getting more and more afraid every day i'm getting more angry you know, so the more that you can speak what's actual and feelings are actual, the more that that present moment doorway opens. So basically you're engaging your will and you're saying, I'm here and I'm going to take charge of this. What's going on here? I want to know. This is the kind of language and, and use of will and the opening of the heart doorway, the feeling doorway, that gets things moving and changing. So it's not, again, it's not a goal. I got to get rid of everything or I got to get rid of the ego. Remember that from the 70s and 80s and 90s? It's like, <clears throat> got to get rid of the ego. And I, and I always get a catch when I hear people say that, like, no, 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 we don't need to get, we need that. We still need that right now. So, <clears throat> so all, all that's required is our attention. Attention is key. And if you'll notice um, what social media does and what, and, and what any kind of media does, it wants your attention. It's vying for your attention. So look over here, look at this, you should get angry about this. Oh, you should be offended by this, right? No, no, um, I'm not offended by it. I'm just looking at it, I'm observing it, and I'm not reacting to it. It's important that um, we recognize that we are empowered uh, to move through these times consciously. And anyone that tells you anything else um, is, is just a distraction. We, we need to be aware, first and foremost, that we have the power to redirect and to change uh, anything in, in any present moment doorway. Okay? So I, I agree. Our attention 
on our heart, our bodies, our feelings, our will, um, is going to start this movement to connect you with all that is um, love. You're moving and you're expanding and you're moving in the direction of love when you engage in this way. Doesn't mean you have to have it all figured out. That's what that's one of the mistakes that I feel people make when they start on any new path. I want to be perfect at this. Well, wanting to be perfect at something is is also a a kind of um, trauma based feeling. Why do you have to be perfect at something? You know, turn that inward. Why do I feel like I have to be perfect at this? I want to know why. Where do, where is this in me? And I you know so you're you're courageously inviting um, these, these inconsistencies, these, um, these ways that, these experiences that got filed away. A lot of times this is when we're younger, but it doesn't have to be, you know, the wounds uh, in our younger years. So you, when you were a child, you know, with your grandpa at the, um, the counter and wondering why you can't have your Sunday there. Um, th this experience um, can resonate in a lot of different directions, but this one that I want to point out is you felt that and it hurt and you asked, you know, perhaps, I can't remember the whole story, but, um, and, and then it didn't make sense, right? That it, it was like, ugh, what? grandpa what it's just that's the way it is or deal with it or you know um in, in any kind of emotional you know i'm feeling emotions <laughs> uh no they're not welcome no that means you're weak but but you need to get all these um these reactions from the people around you and you just like what do I do with this? And then it gets filed or stuffed um, into, well, um, you remember when I did the talk in Southern Colorado last year and I showed on the screen the, the chasm that starts to grow from all the inconsistencies, all the things that don't make sense here. And we're just supposed to stiff up our lip, you know, kind of bullshit, right? Um, all of that gets stuffed in there. And that's what keeps us from connecting to our own, you know, divinity. Though That's all the roadblocks. That's all the unconscious stuff. So if we would have been able to, before it got stuffed, if we would have been able to talk it out and be heard and cry, you know, feel your feelings, um, then, then we wouldn't be carrying that around still and it that getting triggered every time you see it again boom 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 it's not resolved so with this practice you're bringing your attention to it once and for all and saying wow that hurts <laughs> so you're gonna you're it's not that you have to full-on process everything right you can, if it moves in that direction, it's totally fine. But usually, and especially with these energies and frequencies happening right now, usually it's just bring your attention to it, feel it, say it, articulate it, not in story form, in actual feelings, keep saying the feelings as they come up, and then pretty soon you'll feel this, and it's gone. And you're more clear. And then next time it happens, you'll note the markers that you had before, those reactionary, you know, the markers for reaction. They're not there so much anymore. You might feel like a little ping, but oh, yeah, I got to do this now, or I'm, I'm, I'm present with something else now. Not avoiding it or denying it. It just doesn't have the charge, right? Because it doesn't have the, the blob inside of your body anymore to make it 
to charge and react, right? So you're clear. Now you can start to hear some of these higher frequency messages that are pouring in for all of us to help guide us, heal us, guide us. And as I wrote in my last blog post, I, I feel that's why ET contact happened to begin with. I had to go through all this to get to transcend all the debris I had. And it's an ongoing process. I, I agree. I feel what you said about the ego being important. It is important, no question about it, or we wouldn't have it. And yet, getting out of the head, getting out of the mind, and going into the heart as quickly as possible, what I hear you suggesting that we try to do is to, to get back to our balance as quickly as possible. And in saying that, what we have to deal with is what just happened? What did we feel? Okay, I felt that. And be honest about what you felt. And then notice each time that something like that comes up, if that's the same energy, the same feeling, it won't be quite as, as painful the next few times that you have it. And finally, it'll get to the point where you, you don't feel it, that ping anymore, that pain. Um, it, it's interesting that we're in this time right now in, uh, in this country uh, dealing with illness and dis-ease and people uh, that we love, friends, family, dying from a, a dis-ease although it's been happening forever in all of our lives over and over and over, this happens to be, has a lot of fear involved with it because of the uh, fact that so many people may come down with it in, in a short period of time, which would overwhelm the hospitals. Apparently that's the real uh, justification for pumping out all of the fear and so forth. I, I wonder uh, how much of the fear is causing the fear that's being pumped out to us can also be part of the cause of so many people dying just because when they hear that they're ill and they potentially got some, some illness, some disease, they choose to check out instead of, instead of saying, okay, I, I'll get through this because I, I'm strong and, believe, and feeling very comfortable with this fact that we have everything within us to overcome illness and disease. It's just simply not allowing fear to come in. I mean, does that, does that make uh, sense? Yeah. I, and, and I would add, too, that the way I approach it is um, I don't fear death. So you're, you're also, when you, when you go through these kinds of life and death experiences where you have to you know, die repeatedly to your fears, um, you, 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 just, you come to a point where you don't, I just, I don't fear death. So I'm not attached one way or the other to whether I get this disease or not. I know what I am and what I'm connected to. It's very clear to me that this, what we're experiencing here, is, is pretty much, you know, the densest kind of experience that, that we, we had to choose from. And, and we chose to be here um, at this time. And there's a reason why each and every human is here at this time. Um, uh, what is beyond this, not that, that, that we want to end our lives and, you know, and, and stop the, the physical body's existence to hurry up and get there, because it doesn't work that way. So anybody who might be thinking, well, hell then, I'll just kill myself so I can get there to these you know, higher frequencies. No, um, we have to learn and not learn what we're doing here is we are we eventually die and stay alive not only stay alive but become more vibrant and loving and powerful than ever before in physical form and that's what a lot of the messages have said, that this is where we're actually, a lot of people are going to pass on in the old ways that we would expect by losing the body. And then there are going to be some people who get to experience 
death and rebirth while keeping their form. Well, I, I've been studying the Mayan teachings, as you have, um, for a long time, and that's the word they use in the, in the 20 glyphs of the Mayan calendar, the sacred Cholke calendar. They use the word keme, and mm -hmm. keme means exactly what you just said. It's being dead and alive to yeah. make the transformation so quickly that you're still in form. And that you, that when this happens to some people, they understand that their physical body can leave, but there's no need for it to, if you don't want it to, mm -hmm. more or less a decision that we have to make at mm -hmm. that moment. And there's not a value judgment with that. Um, we could leave, you know, any one of us could leave by losing the physical body. And it's like, oh, they chose to go that way. Right. You know, they have their reasons. It isn't like, oh, look, they didn't get it, so they lost their body. No, things do not work that way. There's never any value judgment with the choices that we make. But I do want to just um, add to that suicide thing that if anybody's thinking that they want to commit suicide to avoid this pain, you'll get more chances and with more obstacles. <laughs> If you choose to go out that way, it'll be like, oh, sorry, <laughs> let's try again, you know, and, and we get cycled back through over and over and over um, until we get who we are and that we have the power to transcend this, right? Mm, right. Yeah. Obviously, there's ancient civilizations that have been passing this kind of information yeah. on uh, through the centuries. Yeah. Uh, many of the ancient civilizations have the same philosophy about death and dying in that it's um, not something to fear. In fact, it's something to uh, rejoice about. And there's also the same ancient civilizations that talk about it can happen in a flash and you can um, be present in the present moment and experience what it might feel like to leave the physical form and then still be in form. Mm -hmm. And some of the uh, great masters were able to, to do that, what they would yeah. call going through the, the portal, the yeah. cosmic portal and mm -hmm. returning mm -hmm. and uh, show you that there is no death mm -hmm. in essence. Yeah. 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 You brought up something about, we're talking about the, uh, the issues of, of uh, not racism, uh, per se, but we were talking about the problems that can come up whenever there is judgment or prejudice. And the, 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 the judgment in this case would be to keep um, color people of color from voting or to pe pe keep people of color from entering into a store and, and so forth. But for a lot of reasons, women in general, just being a woman has been also one of those same issues where there's all been a, a lifelong thing that I've noticed in my entire life, the prejudice against women. And the, it's, I feel again, it's about fear. It's the fear of women that, that causes oh, yeah. the same issue, right? It's the fear of, of, of people of color that causes all of these uh, signs to be put up and, and restrictions and so forth and racism, what we call racism. But it also has affected women and every woman I know has been affected by it also. Yeah, that's a good point. And, and I just want to respond by saying that's very accurate according to, you know, the, the messages and downloads I've received about the feminine. Um, and that, you know, what we are witnessing is, is a resurgence of the, what we like to call, now these are just words, but the divine feminine or the divine mother. It's, it's important for, for people of color, for everybody to know that this power um, of, of the mother and of the feminine within each and every one of us, no matter the color of our skin and no matter our gender, however we identify, choose to identify, this power is at the core of our being. And this is the layer. This is the, the reason, the deeper reason to do this um, shadow work is what a lot of people call it. Um, 
I don't, I don't like names and labels, but I mean, it's just really, it's the present moment work with our feelings um, that was given to me from this intelligence and that I applied. And it is what led me eventually to the restorative, um, you know, I talk about the Kundalini events. Um, but then it, 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 people think Kundalini is the end. It's like, no, that's just, this is, these are just events that initiate the, the rest of your possibilities for connection and awakening to the power that you are. But what initiates the, the, the Kundalini or Koyopa, as, as, as the Mayan um, language calls it, um, is once we get this uh, feminine energy rising and active, then it weds back together um, with the masculine energy. And this wedding is what produces the divine child, the divine being, and we are reborn. And I've, I've spoken of this before. Um, this is what is possible for all of us. It's not about color. It's about... Um, you know, each and every one of us, no matter our horrible collective and individual wounds, we acknowledge all of that. But the important thing now is to withdraw, you know, don't get engaged in flinging your shadow out into the world and causing violence and pain and disruption uh, without... I mean, if, if you're doing those things out of a wounded space, it will not solve anything, anytime. If you return to the power that you are, this wedded power that you are, or you're at least working on it and becoming more conscious of it. You are a force in this world that nobody can fucking touch. That's what I want to get across to people. I agree. You cannot be touched. You cannot be tricked. You are in your power. You are back together again, the way you were designed to be. I, you know, that's so important that you say that because it's something that I've talked about. You've talked about for years about taking our power back and remembering who we are. And many of us talk about it. It's easier to talk about than it is to do, um, especially when we're dealing with how to pay the rent, how to buy food, how to uh, cover car insurance, all of these financial issues that come up that again, take our power away, so to speak, and make us feel worthless when we don't have that yeah. money and yeah. the money isn't there. Mm -hmm. the, but so what we have to do is realize that money isn't our power. We have a power within us. And that's what I was saying earlier about learning to, to feel, learning to use our feeling energy, our heart energy, because that is where we really have to go now in order to to regain our power is to feel what we've been feeling and be honest about it yeah. and then say, I want my power back. Yes. I want to take it back yeah. and, and I'm ready to have yeah. it back. Yeah. And that's important. Yeah. You, you, you articulate things so well. I so appreciate that about you. Um, here's the difference. It's like in the mental realm where we're manipulated and controlled, it's like, Oh shit. I've got to, I don't have enough money in my account and I have to you know, make my car payment or I have to, you know, pay the car insurance bill. Oh shit, oh, shit, anxiety, you know, and it starts triggering things in the body that you've stored from the past. Oh, remember last time? So everything starts resonating with the pain and the trauma. The moment that you say, oh, okay, I want to heal this. I'm so confused right now. I have no idea how this is going to work. But I'm here and I'm feeling panic, you know. And so you're dropping, you're going here and then you're dropping to the body where your power is. You drop to your body 
and your feelings, this is where you start to regain a sense of presence so that you can begin to hear the things you need to hear to act on the issue, you know. And it might be something that you never would have thought of, right? Because we're so busy with anxiety and all the triggering going on and the arguing, you know, with the spouse or the kids or whatever, um, then we're not available in our heart and in, in our solar plexus, in our lower belly, the core. This is where our answers are. So you're... You're saying, you're not saying, I'm going to ignore this. You're saying, I'm going to stand in my power, even though, you know, I'm going to tell the truth and say, I don't know anything. I don't know how this works. And so see, that's a, that's a surrender point, right? I, I don't know. I don't, with all this, I don't know. But I'm willing to explore a different way of knowing. A different way of receiving inspiration and, and data right? So that's why the dialogue is so important to, um, you know, to, to catch yourself, you know, and sometimes, and we got to forgive ourselves too. Sometimes we just plain forget, like you're in anxiety ah, for half a day and then you go, oh, I'm supposed to what? Um, and then that's, that's the notice, the, the weak will in the, in the solar plexus. Notice when you start to go, wait, I think that strange lady on YouTube said I should, what? And, and, this, and then tune into your solar plexus and, and, and notice how weak it is and how it's like, wait, uh, I'm supposed to say I'm here and I'm feeling, you know, so you're, re you're, you're resisting, you're reluctant, but at least you're starting to engage your will. That's how we can be so controlled and manipulated because we've given our power, our will over to the authorities, right? That are supposed to be smarter than us and know more than us. And in some cases, there are brilliant people out there. I'm not saying there aren't brilliant people out there. But the intellect is not going to save us. It is the engagement of our will. Knowing what we feel. Knowing how we feel. Taking responsibility for what we feel in any given moment. And starting to open up the doorways of perception so that we can perceive more guidance in, okay, the old world's done. How do we do this? You've got to be available <laughs> to begin. Uh, when you say the old world's done, I, I, I feel like a lot of us are watching this, uh, all of the things that are happening around us. Many of us are making that kind of a statement that we're watching the disintegration of the American society, but it, it's not just American. It's actually uh, happening in many other places in the world. It's mm -hmm. happening in, it doesn't matter. We, we know the names of the countries. What is happening is that human beings are starting to take back their power and they are standing in um, up. They're standing up and they're saying, this isn't right. Yes. And so that those kinds of statements are giving their power back. They're taking their power back by even standing up and saying what they're feeling. Yes. And I, so it's nice to see on a, on a larger scale. And you, one recognizes that we're no longer alone. We used to feel like we were alone with these feelings. Now that we're recognizing that not only did we recognize for the last 70 years of our life and my life that racism exists and that's something that is out there. Yeah. And now we're starting to talk about it. Yes, not only does it exist, it's still here with us and it hasn't really changed much. Yeah. Um, where do we go from here? How do we get to the next, uh, to that so-called new America, the new world, however you want to word it? Yeah. First of all, no matter what is going on around you, the key is to 
go within and to find that space again, that empowered space where you get your information. So as much as, you know, I applaud people who, um, you know, who, who step up and stand up for themselves and they say no to this kind of, um, you know, infringement uh, upon rights. Um, it's also important to be going within because activism, uh, it's more powerful when you're aligned with your inner self. You know, inner and outer is in, in alignment. Again, I'm back to you cannot, you, you have so much power. It's like we become superheroes when we, when we align our inner and outer. So yes, it's good to stand up and say no, but at a certain point, you're not going to be able to, um, you know, win in a, in a battle with um, uh, federal forces <laughs> that have a lot of weapons at their disposal. Um, so it's like, I know it's confusing. We got to do something. We got to do something. Well, who, who's doing something? Who are you? What are you connected to? Are you just connected to a cultural identity? Or are you connected to a divine identity? Where's your power? Where's your source? If your source is just from ideology, then that's not a very strong foundation because a lot of what we have learned and grown up with, um, it, it's, all, it's all wrong and upside down. So what are you standing on? How, how strong is that platform? Yeah, human rights, absolutely. But what about divine rights and divine sovereignty? When we can reconnect back to that core, and say, I speak from this space. I've got the backing of the universe behind me. I feel it, I own it, I am that. And then you bring that. And, and I'll, I'll tell you what, you wouldn't, you're already in another frequency or dimension to where you can't even be touched by, by, by this kind of uh, darkness. So you're not even there to engage or you wouldn't even fight because you're not, because you're healed. Your perceptions are healed. You are not triggered by the things that, oh God, we get so offended, you know, it's so many little stupid things and it, those things aren't important. You know, revaluing, reevaluate who you are and what you're standing upon. So taking back your universal power, taking back your, your given, your creator given gifts that are, that are within you, that we're created to be perfect beings. And we are perfect beings. It's just that we keep forgetting we're, that we are, or we're told that we're not. And we right. accept that as a possibility. Right. Uh, when we take back our universal power and say, I am a universal citizen, I I belong here, I am here, I choose love. Making those kinds of positive statements is, is the way back. It's, it's the third dimension, the three dimensional world um, is the issue. So as long as we continue to want to be a part of the 3D realm. Engage with it, fight with it, yes. Then that continues to be our world. Right. The minute we choose to be universal yes. in, our, in our citizenship, and in our humanitarian, humanitarian abilities, that's us being a part of the universe. Right. Then everything shifts. Yeah. So if I hear you correctly, what you're saying is, let the world do what the ones in the world want to do. Let them do what they need to do. Those of us who take our power back are using a whole nother process, another way of feeling, another way of thinking, another way of being where we are universal in our a process. So we're no longer just Republican or Democrat or whatever right. political party. We're, we're changing, we are, expanding we're our moving, concept. 
There you go. Yeah. yeah. We're expanded. Yeah. That, and once we expand our consciousness, then we're no longer trapped by the context in which they absolutely have to have in order to manipulate us. Right. Yeah. Right. So I'm not saying, again, I want to go back to the activism. If you're doing your work and you're aware of how you get triggered and angry and you're, you're processing this and you're engaged with it and you feel an inspiration to go take a sign and stand in front of this, you know, corporation or that store or whatever, or, or Washington, then by all means, do it. But to, to, to remain in, in the mental realm and, and, and have relationships only with thinking, thought, ideologies, and then basing your actions on that, you are not all together. In fact, you're not all here. So who's, in, again, who's engaging? Who's being an activist? Is it somebody who really needs to prove to mom and dad that I'm somebody you told me I was a nobody, so I'm here, I'm now, I'm an activist, right? You see how that's coming from the trauma? It's coming from defensiveness rather than, boom, I'm locked into this energetic frequency of love. And see, I want to emphasize this. Make no mistake, this is love. And we have lost this. We have lost soul and we have lost love to the point where the definition of love, I always make a joke about this, it has something to do with Valentine's Day. And, and, and or we were told it's weak. Love is the force of the universe. And if we harness that, if we make ourselves available for that and we allow it through, we transform this whole thing. And if, and everybody gets to make their choices. So if you feel like this is, this is la la land. And, and what I speak about is, um, you know, uh, fantasy, uh, Pollyanna, whatever, um, that's okay. You, you, you must go do and be what you feel strongly about. But are those strong feelings based on wounds and shadow trauma? Or are those strong feelings the force of the universe coming through you to share and to be of service here? Yeah. I believe that everybody at their core has this love, has the mother, the divine mother, waiting to be unleashed, waiting for her to be included in our consciousness and all of our activities, yeah. all of our creations. You know that to be true. Yes. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's really interesting to talk with you about these issues. And I, and I, I know we, we've already talked for quite a while, and I don't know how much longer we, we really can. Yeah, we should probably... Um, if, we, if we're going to post want, this, this was an yeah, experiment. I just, <laughs> I just wanted to cover one quick other thing. In next. Okay. Remembering who we are is critical at this time to healing not only our own selves, ourselves, but those around us and letting them heal also along with us because it is the ones who are, are balanced, the ones who are healed, the ones who are choosing love are the ones that are going to create the new America, the new world, if you will. Mm -hmm. And from that universal love, that force, that energy, the powerful energy force of love being used to work within each of us, and out of us, we will create a place where people will feel um, loved and appreciated and accepted rather than segregated and, and prejudiced against and judged and so forth. Right. So there's a lot of things we have to change 
on in ourselves first and then in, in our world in the world that we are creating out of ourselves before we can actually see it manifest in the in the so-called 3d world it's all about perception mm -hmm. and so first step to doing that as you said was first healing the trauma that that we've got that keeps us from remembering who we are that keeps mm -hmm. us from choosing love and the second step is to really connect with that part of ourselves within so that we can be accurate in how we feel heal all of the trauma and be alive and well and healthy a healthy being present on, on, mm -hmm. and, and present mm -hmm. and what what would you say the third the third thing is that we want to work on so we can get into that balance oh i'm not good with lists um <laughs> what, what, you, I feel well, there's only three. <laughs> there's three? Okay. Yes. So what yeah. is the third one, Eduardo? I feel like it's it's choosing joy, choosing to enjoy this life. Yeah. And and being a, a, a person who sings and dances and chooses joy again. Yes. Because it, it is out of that joy, out of that love, out of that creative energy that flows through us. Mm -hmm. from this excitement that we can have within yes. ourselves mm -hmm. that we can actually create that same kind of joy right. in our new in our new world excellent so, that's the if you want to watch the dark forces be derailed start dancing in the streets <laughs> <laughs> and and truly being joyful and spreading this joy um mm -hmm. not from a fake place but from that grounded anchored uh anchored yep. divinity yeah. Um, that would just like, you talk about a bomb <laughs> for the, the dark <laughs> manipulative forces. It's like, that is the best bomb you can create in these times. Yeah. Or, or write another Hamilton like uh, Lin-Manuel. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Write Hamilton and make it funny and make it dancing and, you know, forgiving yeah. and all that stuff, you know. Yeah. yeah that's my, my energy is excited now because I can sense that we're onto something because it's it's accepting your universal citizenship. Yeah. It's choosing the the love as the source of energy that we use in our lives in every aspect of our lives. That's our fuel. Then, That's our power. Yep. And creating joy from that love mm -hmm. first within mm -hmm. ourselves, and then allowing that to spread out and choose music and singing and dancing and loving one another and being kind to one another and mm -hmm. sharing what we have with our brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. To me, that's that's where we have to go. That's what we need to let through and allow to happen. We've been told that all of this is, you know, oh, oh we, we, that's, you know, that's ridiculous. That's weak. And we got to be strong. And we got to, you know, take on this, this identity that is not us, you know, at our, at our core. Every single one of us, no matter, again, no matter the gender, no matter the color of your skin, we're all the same in this divine core. And we all have these unique, amazing gifts that are just waiting to erupt, to come through and to share and to transform this world. That's what people like use, use the word ascension. It's not really so much ascension. We're not leaving and going away. We're embodying the rest of our being. If, but first we have to clear the way. We can't pretend to do this. This is something that we have to engage with consciously. This is where we come in. It's like, oh, okay, I'm going to be a warrior now. I'm going to do this. I'm going to engage with it. And so, yes, joy and, and a sense of empowerment. So um, engage with that will and say, I'm here and, and I know that I, have, um, I am empowered to do this. This is something that I can do. I'm in charge. Because so many people feel so helpless and out of control, it's because your will is not. If you check in with it, it's like, wait, you know, how hard is it to even say what? Answer the question: What are you feeling right now? Yeah. You know, what do you want? Who are you? You know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate you, and thank you very much for for taking the time to talk with me today. And uh, I love you. 
I love this planet and I love the beings on the planet and I feel like I'm here and I choose love. And thank you so much for sharing thank your you. love with me. Thank you. I love you too. And I love that we're both here and that we have shared so many years together on this planet and that um, no matter where I am and you are, we're still, we're still engaged and we're doing this thing, yes. you know, that we yeah. couldn't always explain. But now it's like, wow, everything that, that the message is said and everything that we talked about and all of our experiences and, you know, going to Guatemala and walking the fire paths, you the water and the fire, me the fire, and all of these experiences that, you know, me saying, I'm going to go to the top of the, I'm going to climb to the top of the pyramid and I'm just going to, I'm, I'm not going to become a Mayan priest like I'm supposed to. I'm just going to say, okay, that old world is done. I know it's going to go because I've seen it so many times. I'm here. Show me. Engage with me and show me how I can help. And the rest is <laughs> very challenging life, but at the same time, amazing. Amazing. Uh, yeah, the jaguar woman just growled out in the distance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. With, very well said. <laughs>